It's been a week. We got a lot to talk about. Y'all see the title of the stream? Did Kendrick Lamar flop? And I do want to ask that question. And when I mean flop, um, I'm speaking facetiously. I don't necessarily think he flopped. He's probably going to do, his file numbers are going to come out shortly. But between 300 and 320, that's not a flop. However, Dam did 500. Now, he took five years off, which people might say heightened the, you know, the need, the urgency, you know, supply and demand. People wanted it even more, but didn't do as much. Some people say, well, it was because he didn't do physicals. Well, a lot of people don't do physicals these days. Drake don't do physicals. Drake still did 600. I got a theory about why Kendrick did less than what I predicted him to do. I think he was going to do 400 to 500,000. I'm a, I'll tell you my theory now. We could come back to this. You know, it's going to be, I got a lot of stuff to address. I think Kendrick did less than what most would, or at least people like me would expect him to do because Kendrick did not pander to the social justice warriors of Twitter. He went against cancel culture, which is what Twitter is all about. Kendrick actually was an independent thinker. And if Kendrick pandered to the audience who basically just give him fellatio for the last five years, I think he would have done way better. But that's why I got to salute to Kendrick. Because the easiest thing for him to do would have just appeased them. Except he was criticizing why people can't say certain words about the LGBTQ community. Oh, wow. Oh, no. He's not supposed to talk about that. He mentioned that. He had a whole saga about him a white girl. Oh, hell nah. You know what that reminded people of? Oh, this nigga on some Martin Luther King shit. If everybody ain't know, apparently Martin Luther King used to be f***ing white chicks. I ain't know. <laughs> Let me stop this before they <laughs> flag the YouTube or whatever. So I think because Kendrick did not pander and did not go into what group think wanted him to do, he did less. But I guarantee as he's in Ghana playing soccer, kicking it with his folks, he probably feels more free. You know, um, I've always said about like people like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. There's a certain segment of Twitter that latch on to them. That essentially, you know, when we were asking, you know, why don't Kendrick come out and speak when there was like, you know, some social turmoil and maybe race relations stuff going on. Maybe he didn't have nothing to say, or maybe he wasn't going to say whatever the masses wanted him to say. It becomes a, a time where you get in a particular position like Kendrick is in now, that just like how um, Colin Kaepernick is in, where you have now become the face and the voice for a movement where necessarily maybe, you have, maybe not all of your opinions or every single thought you have align with the masses. It then forces you to either compromise your soul because now you got to be a puppet. I'm not saying that Kendrick is a fraud because I think Kendrick is authentic, authentic to the point. I think he could have done better by just repeating and saying and echoing the shit people wanted to hear. But instead, he focused on personal growth, growth as growth of him as a husband or a potential husband. I don't know if he's married. I'm sorry. Or. Or should I say and. Him as a man. You know, we all have trauma. He, he, he told us certain things that people might not like, but it made sense when you think about his personal trauma coming up. I, th I, I think that's brave in itself. But the social justice warriors don't want to hear that shit. They want to hear you say the same. It was cool when it was saying, we going to be all right. And I ain't gonna lie, people still are giving him credit for the album, but I see people, they're frowning their nose up at certain stuff that he's saying, even though he's being authentic to himself. It just tells you, you know, when certain people are so scared to go against the mob, the woke mob, you almost become a slave to them by being scared to go against them. Because if you're not saying what they want you to say, you're pretty much not, you're pretty much either going against them or just not lying. So salute to Kendrick. Still think the album could have been more palatable. I talked about it on Off the Record Podcast. If you didn't watch that episode, I, I spoke a little bit more about what I think about albums and just music and how people rate it. Please go watch that episode. 
It's the last episode. I have another episode of Off the Record coming today, maybe tomorrow. That episode will be the official breakdown of the Meg the Stallion police report. It's gonna be called. It's gonna be called the night that Tory allegedly shot Meg. We have the police reports. We have all the information known that night. Not nothing afterwards. Only that night. We're going to try to reconstruct the scene. I'm going to tell you everything I know from every source I know. I have the police report. I know what everybody said. The time, the days, what the doctors first saw. We're going to reconstruct this. Some people say, chill. I said the night Tori allegedly shot. Like, whatever. Or maybe I'll title it, The Night Meg Said Tory Shot Her. I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to say Tory's guilty. I'm, and I'm not trying to say Meg wasn't shot. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to, I'm going to paint that picture because we have the final piece of evidence for that night. Now, we're going to try to establish and examine everybody's frame of mind. Well, if later on you came out saying you were lying, why were you lying? Why were you acting like this? Why were you fighting in the middle of the street? Why were you kicking a window? Why was Tori so intoxicated? Why was the driver not in? We, we're going to talk about all that type of stuff, okay? Um, what's the blood alcohol level of these people? Do we know? Why don't we know? Uh, the, watch the podcast. The next podcast will be breaking that down. Um, Yeah. So if you ask me, and just to answer the... the, the um. Stream title, did, did um, not Tori, Kendrick flop? No, Kendrick didn't flop. But did Kendrick, I believe, disappoint the masses who really claim they've been, they've been Kendrick fans, but in reality, they like Kendrick only for his stance and what they feel he's fighting for, but not for really his art. You know, you know, social media have turned people's arts into, oh, you're you're now an activist. You tell me when Kendrick Cole or these other people's I know they've shown support. Like, for example, Cole has showed up to rallies. He showed up to Ferguson, a few other places. I don't think he ever said he was an activist. He's, he's someone who's black, who cares. But their music at times, people feel like they need that person to speak. Like, with all due respect, since when did Kendrick's career become, oh, we need him to speak on the black plight? He started off his career talking, telling us that he was a kid who, who was in Compton just watching shit outside of his window, never really told you if he agreed or disagreed or he told you you understood, and he was a very complex point of view. Then, of course, we had a lot of social shit happen, and people just said, nah, you're the guy who, but speaking of which, and since we're on this this um this train of thought, 